Why, hello there, I'm Professor Joel, and welcome to another episode of Planet Scooby Reviews. Today we are covering The Warlock of Wimbledon, and it originally aired on December 16th, 1978, as part of Scooby's All-Star Season. So uh, this would have been like an hour-long episode where they'd show like Scooby-Doo Laugh Olympics episode, which was about a half hour, and then they'd show another half hour of a rerun, or a new episode of Scooby-Doo in this instance. So later on, it was repackaged as part of the Scooby-Doo show, and then, you know, there's a lot of gray with that because you can't buy the Scooby-Doo show complete uh, on physical media. You can buy the first season as part of the, the, the Dynamite Hour DVD, but you can't buy the season two or this episode as part of it, even though it originally aired the second time around as the Scooby-Doo show. They made this uh, repackaged a third time as Scooby-Doo Where Are You season three. So season three of Scooby-Doo Where Are You it's known for the gang traveling around the world. So they'd go to China, they'd come up to Canada, they'd go to Italy, and in this episode they went to England. So they're in England and they're uh, they're near Wimbledon. They're in England actually to see some like Stonehenge type ruins, but um, they end up in Wimbledon at a tennis tournament because they meet a player by the name of Jimmy Pelton who is cursed by a warlock named Amthos. So, really great episode, and it was requested by Victor, and it reminded him of a Sherlock Holmes uh, short story that he, it's his favorite short story. And I completely forget what that is. Victor did let me know at one point. I wrote it down, but due to um, us working from home due to the pandemic, uh, I, I misplaced my notes with my work paperwork. So, Victor, if you're watching, if you could leave it on the episode review for this episode on my website, that would be great. Uh, if for those of you first time watching, uh, if you want to leave a request or visit my website, it's in the description below. You can't request episodes through YouTube. Uh, no one can leave comments on my YouTube site, unfortunately, due to YouTube laws where, because I cover cartoonies, cartoons, um, people under the age of 13 might be watching and uh, they're not allowed to leave comments. So YouTube kind of disabled it for everyone. So in the description below, I have links to my email where you can leave a request. Uh, you can leave comments as well. Uh, you can leave it on my Facebook page, which is below, or my website. But enough of my jibber jabber. Let's get to the review. The episode begins with tennis star Jimmy Pelton and his trainer, Nick Thomas, out for an evening jog in England. Jimmy is in training and he has an important tennis game at Wimbledon the next morning. The two of them come across an ancient druid rune of Rothmore, where they discover an ancient staff. Jimmy picks up the staff and smoke begins to emerge from the eyes, along with the eyes glowing yellow. Tossing it like a javelin, the staff seems to explode, and from the clouds, the warlock named Anthos and his hound from hell emerges. The warlock proclaims he's back to fulfill his curse on the Pelton family, and seeing as Jimmy is the last of the Pelton family, he is doomed. I am the warlock Anthos. I have returned to fulfill my curse. You are doomed. The warlock tosses the staff back to Jimmy, and Nick, his trainer, tells Jimmy to ditch it. So Jimmy tosses it aside, and the two run away from the warlock. Meanwhile, the gang are on their way to sightsee the ruins of Rothmar, although Freddy is having some issues navigating due to the dense fog. Running out into the middle of the road, Freddy has to slam on the brakes because Jimmy and Nick are standing in front of the mystery machine. The gang get out of the mystery machine, and Jimmy and Nick explain their situation to the gang. We were attacked by the warlock Anthos. A warlock is like a wizard, but worse. Scooby is at first pleased to hear about a magician, but is soon terrified as Shaggy explains that a warlock is more like an evil wizard. In the Mr. Machine, Jimmy introduces himself and Freddy's starstruck. I'm Jimmy Pelton, and this is my manager, Nick Thomas. You're the famous tennis star playing in the finals at Wimbledon tomorrow. John has Freddy drive him back in the Mr. Machine to his nearby manor or castle. The castle or manor is it's his family home and apparently way back when his family had to sell it off during hard times. But with his tennis success, John was able to buy it back recently. At the spooky castle, they meet John, the rather stern and serious gatekeeper. Inside, we also meet Mrs. Warren, the housekeeper, who Scooby and Shaggy take an instant shining to as she offers them a platter full of pastries. My housekeeper's pastries are smashing. 
Yeah, baby! Yeah. Inside, over tea, Jimmy wonders why the warlock would show up today of all days, especially after all these years. Mrs. Warren asks Jimmy for his cup to read the tea leaves, and looking in, she immediately sees danger. Oh, I see danger! Danger, Will Robinson! Danger! We don't have to wait long for danger to appear as the warlock barges in and once again threatens Jimmy. You will never be freed from the curse of Amphos. I want a hand. Terrible danger. Go. <laughs> Before he disappears, the warlock leaves behind the cursed staff once again. The gang chase after the warlock to see if they can catch him, and out in the fog they hear John the gatekeeper cry out for help. Running to John's house, they discover that John is missing and the gatehouse is ransacked and covered with red paw prints. They also find John's boots splattered with red mud. Following the red paw prints, they arrive at an empty field where the paw prints end. And it's just the prints, there's no prints of John or anything else, just these massive dog prints. Arriving on a bicycle is Mr. Burgess, who turns out to be Jimmy's solicitor, which basically means a lawyer. Hello! Hello! So he shows up and he asks what is going on, and then he suggests they all just go back in the house where they can catch him up on what's going on. Shaggy and Scooby warm up in front of a roaring fire while Jimmy and Nick explain to Mr. Burgess the night's chaotic events. Mr. Burgess exclaims that he always feared that this would happen. In ancient times, Amthos was accused of witchcraft, and it was the Pelton family that was responsible for driving him off the land. In response, Amthos cursed the Peltons, and shortly after, they went into massive debt and were forced to sell the castle. Because Jimmy used every penny he had to buy the manor back, Mr. Burgess says that he has to win the tournament tomorrow or else he won't be able to pay his mortgage and he'll be forced to sell the manor once again. With that bleak detail, Mr. Burgess, in true British tradition, leaves on a chipper and dry note. Freddy gives Shaggy the warlock staff and tells him to get rid of it. Shaggy and Scooby head out into the fog and try to toss it into the pond. Their efforts are thwarted though because Amthos emerges from the pond and throws the staff back at them. Shaggy and Scooby run to the tennis courts where Jimmy is getting in some extra practice. Freddy is a little angry that they still have it so Freddy snatches it back and tosses it aside. Shaggy then tells Freddy that the warlock wouldn't let them get rid of it. The warlock appears and then mocks him with his dry British laugh. <laughs> and then his devil hound chases Nick off the tennis courts. Jimmy chases after Nick but trips and loses his glasses. The rest of the gang then chase after Jimmy before he can hurt himself and find him near the staff which is impaled in the ground by his glasses. In a fit of rage, Jimmy breaks the staff in two and chucks the pieces aside. The headpiece's eyes then begin to glow, but neither Jimmy or the gang even notice. Back at the ruins of Rothmore, Jimmy and the gang look for clues. Here Velma finds more mud, and that mud matches the mud she found on the gatekeeper's boots. Jimmy tells her that this is the only area where that mud can be found. Upon hearing the devil hound's howls, the gang head back to the manor where they find the staff restored. And there's a note attached that says, if you play tomorrow, it will mean your doom. You are doomed. Doom. Mr. Burgess happens to wander by again and advises Jimmy not to play at Wimbledon. However, Jimmy declares that the show must go on. In the morning, Freddy drops Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby off at the ruins where they once more look for clues. Shaggy finds the first clue pretty quick when he falls through a sinkhole and lands in an underground secret chamber. Inside the chamber, dozens of woodworking tools and piles of sawdust are strewn about. Velma also finds several wooden poles leaning up against the wall. Velma also finds a bill of sale that says one pair, spec lens. Scooby also finds boots with red paw prints on the bottom. Before they can snoop around any further, the warlock shows up and chases all three of them off to Wimbledon by way of a rowboat chase. At Wimbledon, the tournament is afoot and Jimmy is in the lead. His game is soon squashed as he begins seeing the warlock sitting in random spots among the audience. During the intermission, Jimmy tells the gang about his dilemma but Freddy writes it off as mental strain. However, during the game, Jimmy slips and his glasses fall off. Knowing how it feels to be blind as a bat, Velma scoops them up and realizes that there's something fishy about them. Trying the glasses on, Velma figures out the mystery and hands Jimmy her glasses instead. We also learn that Velma keeps a spare pair of glasses in her back pocket because she puts on another pair and puts Jimmy's glasses that she found aside. 
Jimmy ends up making a comeback. However, the warlock still taunts and heckles him from the sidelines. You must lose. Even though the audience, the Wimbledon security, and the referees can now see the warlock, the game continues, and Jimmy ends up winning. Somehow, through all the drama, Fred takes his eye off Scooby and now sees Scooby being chased throughout the tennis stands by the warlock and his devil hound. During the chase, Scooby crashes into a hot dog stand and captures the warlock accidentally. Velma first pulls the mask off the devil hound and it's revealed to be a droopy looking dog. Daphne then pulls the mask off the warlock and we see that it is Jimmy's tennis trainer, Nick. Velma reveals that there is a second warlock on the loose and puts Jimmy's glasses on the television camera. Pointing the camera at the audience and using that glasses technology, she finds a second warlock out in the audience and she points him out and the Wimbledon security capture him. At the police station, Velma explains that Jimmy had special glasses on so that the bearded man they caught could wear this invisible makeup which would show up as a warlock disguise. Velma was clued into the trick by the bill of sale she found for the spec pair of glasses. Velma then rips the beard off the man and reveals him to be John, the gatekeeper. Velma also explains that the mud on his boots made John a suspect because that mud was only found at the ruins. She also explains that John had special boots with paw prints to make it look like only the devil dog left his home after he was kidnapped. So it kind of made him look like he was carried off by the devil dog. Nick, the tennis trainer, explains that John and him are brothers and descendants of the Amthos clan. They wanted Jimmy to lose the tennis match so they could buy the manor and then the curse would be complete. We would have succeeded if it weren't for you meddling kids. So I give this episode 8.5 out of 10. I want to kind of give it a 9, but there's a couple of things that hold me back. First one is the uh, the warlock. He's not all that intimidating. Um, most of the bad guys in season three of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? aren't that intimidating. Season one and two, I think we got our scariest villains, like the space kook was scary. Yeah, the the, the clown, the ghost clown, he was, he was really spooky. Um, you know, the clue, the... Uh, Scuba Diver from the Clue for Scooby-Doo. He was, he was kind of creepy. Um, a lot of creepy ones there. Season 3, not as much creepiness going on. And they're a little more colorful. So, you know, I, I, know, I know things changed in 1978. They had to, like, ease up on the creepiness because parents are complaining. So I can't, you know, fault it too hard. But even, even the warlock himself, I mean, when he appeared, uh, the gang chased after him right away. And, you know, they wouldn't do that with other villains. They'd kind of scatter. But with this guy, they're just... He just ran after him because he just kind of pointed and said, you are doomed. Or he threw the staff at them that was cursed. And, you know, that's that's not even intimidating either, this cursed uh, this cursed staff. Um, the invisible makeup, that really didn't bother me except for the fact that the warlock had a cowl on, but the guy wearing the makeup didn't have a cowl on. So how do you make a cowl appear on your face, like the pointed ears that Batman has? How do you make that happen when you, there's nothing there except air? Unless, I, I, I don't get that. So I know I, I can't fault it too hard. I know it's cartoon logic, but give me a half point for that. I'm taking off a half point. Just, just give me that. Um, again, your review might be different from mine. We're all going to kind of argue. We're all going to put things in different spots depending on nostalgia or interest and such. And that's what I want to promote. Just the funness of that. Don't take my rating as gospel. Don't take it as, you know... Uh, don't get offended by it if you give this a 10 out of 10 and it's your favorite episode. It's not that important in the grand scheme of things. It's our individuality, our personal tastes, our uniqueness is the important thing. And I'd love to hear your opinion. If you give this a 0, if you give this a 3, if you give this a 10, leave a comment on my website. Let me know what you think. I'm interested. And uh, I'm not going to argue with you other than, you know, just nerd arguing where... You know, we just might playfully bicker back and forth about things because that's it. We just want to keep it fun. Uh, what I did love about this episode was how they messed with Jimmy's head. That was cool. Uh, the fact that you got the one guy in the audience switching seats, just throwing off Jimmy's game. And then you got the other guy on the sidelines saying, you are doomed wearing the costume. That was super cool. And the long game these guys had, like, you just don't become a tennis trainer, do you? I don't think you do. I think you gotta get an education. You gotta, you gotta uh, get some qualifications, some experience. And he's probably Jimmy's trainer all season because this was the final game. And um, he's probably Jimmy's trainer for maybe a few years before that. Like they had a pretty good bond, and all that time they spend training together, running together. You'd think they develop a pretty good friendship, but this guy's got this 
you know, this revenge plot that goes back two centuries. And, uh, you know, why didn't they buy the place back before Jimmy bought it? Did they kind of say, Jimmy, you should buy this, try and make him go bankrupt and then buy it back? Like, what's going on there? And then the gatekeeper, how did he get the job? Like, what on his resume made him stand out versus everyone else? It was, it was a pretty sneaky plot. And then, oh, another spot where this episode shined was the devil hound. That thing was scary. I mean, Warlock was not scary at all, but that devil hound in the shot they showed of the devil hound just howling as a Mr. Machine is driving down that windy road to the, the manor, that was super cool. I love that. And um, the fact that this dog could carry you off in his teeth in the, into the British fog, super crazy good. Loved it. Um, what else did I want to say? I don't think there's much else I have to say. Just 8.5. Uh, again, thank you, Victor, for recommending and requesting this episode. Uh, if you'd like, like to leave a request, again, it's uh, all the details to get in touch with me are below in the description. I want to thank everyone for any uh, subscribing to my channel, any likes on the video, any uh, Facebook page subscriptions, uh, website visits. You don't have to do everything. If you just do one, it helps out. Uh, lets me know, you know, you, you kind of like what I'm doing. Um, I was putting videos out every other week because I want to take my time to make them funny. Um, I'm really working hard now to get them out every week with this pandemic going on. I know a lot of us need to be, you know, need some distractions. And if I can make one person smile, um, you know, it's worth it to me. Um, I'm not promising I get one out every week. Uh, I do have a busy job. Uh, don't we all though? I'm lucky to be able to work from home. Uh, but the fact is um, I could work through all that. It's just I have um, carpal tunnel syndrome sometimes and my wrists hurt and doing the videos, it does take a long time. It takes about 10 hours. And uh, if I'm working, when you work at home on uh, for your, your other job, uh, a 40 hour week becomes a 60 hour week because you just never leave your computer. You wake up, you sit down on your computer, you start responding to emails. Uh, you don't commute anymore, you don't drive anywhere, so you don't have that break. So you're just constantly, you know, typing and mousing and uh, clicking and uh, it's, it's um, my wrists have been killing me, but I'm going to, I'm going to plow through it, forge through it, hopefully, and get these videos out weekly. Um, and next week we are going to cover the uh, Haunted Horseman of Hagglethorn, Hagglethorn Hall. It's a request from Charlie. So that should be coming out. Uh, so until next time, stay spooky. Night time. Day time. Night time. Day time. Night time. Day time. You are doomed. You're doomed if you stay here. Doom. You will never be free from the curse of Amphos. It's got a death curse. Oh, shut up, Ralph.